Hey everyone, my name is Clyde and in today's video we are going to talk about how to effectively allocate your commanders and your ships in order to get the best out of both. Many of you may have seen my video titled How to Get 21 Point Captains Faster. I uploaded this about a year ago to YouTube and in that video I explained how to manage your captains using a spreadsheet which will help you better visualize the entire problem space of leveling your commanders across all the nations and all the ships in World of Warships so that they can reach max level more quickly. Now, if you haven't seen that older video, I do recommend giving it a watch. It's chock full of great information about power leveling your commanders, and the contents are highly relevant to today's video. You don't have to stop watching this one to go watch that one, uh, but I will put a link in the video description down below. And if you do go watch it, you'll be in the right headspace for today's discussion. And that's because today we are going to be taking those same ideas to the next level. In fact, I... Ah. I don't know, maybe being here in the port just isn't exactly the right location for this kind of video. It just seems like today's topic is so much more academic than a normal World of Warships video. Oh, you know what? I got an idea. Hang on. Um, there we go. Much better. Okay. First off, let's talk about some commander management basics. If you want to level your captains faster, you need to observe two basic rules. Rule number one is that you should have exactly one captain for each tech tree ship that you have in your port. And rule number two is that in almost every single case, although there are some exceptions, your premium ships should not have dedicated commanders assigned to them. If you remember from my 21 point commander video, our goal is to have the minimum number of captains, but maintain the maximum build optimization of that minimal set of commanders. If we have fewer commanders, we need to grind less XP to push all of our commanders up to 21 points. It's as simple as that. Of course, no two players are gonna do this in the exact same way. So some players may opt to have fewer commanders than others. This strategy favors captain leveling over having perfectly optimized combat builds for each commander. Other players might decide that they need those specialized commander builds. And as a result, that strategy requires more captains, which means you need more XP, which means in order to get all of your favored captains up to 21, it's gonna take longer to get there. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey Clyde, I am doing fine with the existing commander spreadsheet. Why do you think I need another one? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that if you love the old commander spreadsheet and after watching this video, you decide you don't need the new one, that is perfectly fine. You should absolutely keep using the old commander spreadsheet. I think it's a great tool. I have used it for many years and some of you guys have been using it for a whole year. So don't change if you don't want to. The original spreadsheet is geared more towards that first strategy that we just talked about, leveling commanders more quickly. But it doesn't help you ensure that you are assigning the right commanders to the right ships in order to more effectively utilize the right builds. This is sort of a complex topic, but if you'll stick with me for a little bit longer, I think we can make it a lot simpler. So what's different about the new spreadsheet? In other words, why would I want to use the new version? Well, there are basically four features that I'd like to talk about. The first is that it provides better tracking of your unique and seasoned commanders. Unique commanders are like Luchins or Cunningham or Swirsky, and seasoned commanders are like the Suzuki brothers, the Wrong brothers, the Doe brothers, the Znamensky brothers, the Jetland brothers, all of these guys that we have two of um, that are kind of like mid-level enhanced commanders. The new spreadsheet provides a column with a selectable drop-down list where you can select whether or not a captain is unique, seasoned, multi-nation, or normal. The sheet also uses some conditional formatting, so when you select a specialized type of captain, it'll highlight those cells in gold or green so that you can more easily distinguish them from the rest of the commanders on your list. For those of you with more than, say, 75 or 100 ships, and a lot of you might have 300 or 400 or even 500 ships, this is a beneficial feature. This is important because our unique and seasoned commanders have perks that can give you the edge in combat as long as you're leveling them and assigning them appropriately. More on this a little bit later. The new sheet also provides some better facilities for tracking whether or not your commander has a custom voice pack or custom artwork. There's a column where you can select yes or no for both of these attributes. And if you select yes, that cell turns green so that you can more readily identify if your commanders have custom voices or art. Um, they don't have a combat advantage like our seasoned and unique commanders, but some players really like focusing on grinding those captains up to 21 points. And now the spreadsheet helps you with that. The new version also includes a nice reference for all of the unique and seasoned commanders in World of Warships as well. 
I'll show this off in more detail a little bit later in the video, but suffice it to say for now that it includes a, a lot of information on each of the special commanders, what their special abilities are, and I've even recommended some ship assignments as well. Of course, those recommendations aren't gonna be perfect for every single player in every single circumstance. However, I think it's a nice place to start when you just get one of those commanders and you're like, great, what do I do with this dude? Finally, the new spreadsheet introduces a concept that I call ship cohorts. Ship cohorts are used to help players understand what ships can share a single commander build, and they also simplify making captain assignments to these groups of similar ships. I'll explain this concept in detail as the video progresses, but this is without question the best feature of the new version. The spreadsheet also provides a starting set of cohorts for your consideration, and it empowers you to create your own cohorts or modify the existing ones in order to suit your own playstyle and build preferences. So who is this spreadsheet for? I mean, nerds, obviously. And frankly, this spreadsheet could be too nerdy for some of you, but it is intended to be a tool that could benefit pretty much anyone. If you have more than just a few premium ships, many of which you can get for free these days, you'll probably find something in this spreadsheet useful. If you're a new player, or even if you're a free-to-play player, using the tools contained in this spreadsheet will save you a ton of time by helping you make the right decisions about captain and ship allocations now so that you don't have to rework them or retrain them later. And if you're a turbo whale, then you've got so many ships in your port and so many commanders that there's almost certainly no way that you are keeping adequate track of them in order to be doing your captain allocation and captain leveling efficiently. This spreadsheet is here to help all of you guys. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get into this cohorts concept and make some sense of it. I mentioned ship cohorts earlier, and I'd like to define that term now so that we can use it going forward to describe a concept that we all know about and we all use even if we don't have a common name for it. A cohort is a group of premium ships of the same nation and class that have similar attributes such that they can use the same commander build without losing any measurable combat performance. I put a lot of thought into that definition, and there are a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. The first is that cohorts do not include tech tree ships. You will be tempted at some point to put a tech tree ship into a cohort. Don't do it, and I'll tell you why. Remember earlier, we stated that every single tech tree ship that you own should be assigned its own commander. The cohort concept is a tool that we use to allocate premium ships to those same commanders, the ones that are already allocated to our tech tree ships. We'll see how this works as we continue, but for now, just remember that cohorts do not include tech tree ships. And the reason for this is because we want the flexibility to be able to move and reassign our cohorts to different commanders without having to pay any retraining penalties. The second thing that I'd like to point out is that all of the ships in a single cohort have to be from the same nation. Yes, there are a bunch of ships that are probably from different nations that could probably use the same commander build if that commander could be assigned to more than one nation. However, there are very few commanders in World of Warships that work in this way. In fact, there are so few that as I said that, some of you are thinking, wait, there's commanders that you can assign to ships of two different nations? They do exist, they're very rare, they tend to be very expensive, and Wargaming does not offer them for very long when they do offer them. For now, just remember that we want to be able to assign an entire cohort to a single commander of a single nation, and for that reason, all ships in a given cohort have to be from the same nation. And the last thing I want to cover is that all ships in a given cohort have to be members of the same World of Warships class. That means like Battleship Destroyer Cruiser, not like gearing or tribal class or whatever. This is because each class has a unique skill tree and each commander can have one build for each class skill tree. We want to be able to assign all of the ships in an entire cohort to a single commander build. And that means that they all have to be from the same class. Okay, so now that we know what a cohort is and what the rules for creating one are, how did we even get to this point? This project started way back in June of 2022 when I realized that I wasn't using my seasoned and unique commanders effectively. Many of them were languishing with like 10 or 12 points on them and they were assigned to some mid-level tech tree ship that only got XP once a year, maybe twice a year, when I was knocking off snowflakes for special wargaming events. In addition to that, there were a number of powerful seasoned and unique commanders that I hadn't even bothered to purchase from the armory yet. I knew that I wanted to go get those commanders that I didn't already have, and I wanted to level the ones that I did already have quickly and maximize the benefit that I got from their enhanced skills and talents. 
In order to do this, I needed to understand a few things. First, I needed to know what nations had specialized commanders. I know that seems dumb, but like, you know, you knew they were out there, but like, okay, really, which ones were out there? I spent a lot of time studying seasoned and unique commanders, their enhanced skills, their talents, and learning what classes of ships these abilities applied to best. The next thing I needed to do was to study the entire body of all of the premium ships for each nation in order to understand what ships would best benefit from the enhanced skills and talents of these unique and seasoned commanders from those nations. Like many of you, I had collected a lot of ships since I started to play World of Warships back in the fall of 2015. So for me, this was no small task. And partly through the study, I realized that I had plans to acquire more premium ships. And so in the end, I decided to just study all of the ships in the game and create cohorts for every single ship in World of Warships, rather than just the ones that I had in my port. The second tab of the new spreadsheet has a list of all of the cohorts that I developed over the last several months. Each cohort is represented by a row in the spreadsheet. In addition to the name of the cohort, each one includes the nation, the class, a list of premium ships that are assigned to that cohort, as well as some notes about the cohort. In the notes section, I provide my thought process and some justification for why that cohort exists and what kinds of ships belong in it or don't belong in it. I also provide a column for tech tree alignments. Basically, if there is a top tier ship, a tier 10 or a super ship that makes sense and could use this same cohort's build, uh, or this cohort's same build, I list it in this column. Simple enough? Well, I mean, actually, no. This is an incredibly complicated problem to solve with literally hundreds of variables spread across hundreds of ships. As a result of that, you might not actually like all of my cohorts. Maybe some of them just don't mesh with your playstyle, and that is totally fine. The good news is that the cohorts are fully customizable. You can modify them, delete them, insert some new ones, and everything in the spreadsheet should just work. I'll show you how to do this a little bit later in the video, but first I wanna give you a tour of the spreadsheet and show you how to use it. And after that, we'll add a commander and assign them to a tech tree ship and some cohorts and show you how all of that works too. Hey, just a brief interruption before we continue on in the video. If you guys like the Only You Can Prevent Nevsky Fires poster up above me, you can get one for your own home at ClydePlays.com. Um, you can also get one to wear in t-shirt form. Uh, I ordered one in maroon. I think it's gonna look really nice with the yellow. Or you can order a decal so you can stick it, wear it, or hang it up on the wall. I suppose you could hang the t-shirt on the wall as well if you wanted. Uh, swing on over to clydeplays.com if you'd like to get one for yourself. Uh, and without further ado, let's get back to the main video. All right, there are five tabs in this spreadsheet, but you really only need to know about the first three. The first one is basically like the old version of the spreadsheet, but it has some new tools. This is the captains tab, and this is where you'll add your captains and manage their progress until they reach 21 points probably still manage what ships they're assigned to in the spreadsheet after they reach 21 points as well. At the top of the sheet are a few green shaded cells that provide detailed instructions on how to use this tab. Please read them. Please read them. They will answer a lot of your questions. If after reading them, you're still not sure what to do, you can join us on the Clyde Plays Discord. And I've created a channel there called Captain Spreadsheet Version 2. You can join that channel and post your question in there. And either I or somebody else will try to help you with it. Um, there is a detailed set of descriptions for each of the columns as well in that instruction section, and it explains what they're for and how to use them uh, properly. Some of the columns are optional, so if you decide you don't want those features, I've labeled which ones make sense uh, if you'd like to just hide them, and that is totally fine with me. I am A-OK -okay with this. Um, I've also preloaded the dock with a whole bunch of rows for each country, so you should have plenty of rows to add all of your commanders. However, if you decide that you need to insert another row, there are some instructions provided to do that at the top of the sheet as well, um, and they'll guide you to make sure that you copy the formulas down to the appropriate cells so that everything still continues to work properly. The second tab is the cohorts tab. This is just like the captain's tab where there is a green instruction box at the top that explains how to use it. This sheet is where you'll create, modify, and update your cohorts you'll add or remove ships to them, etc. Um, we'll talk more about this a little bit later. The third tab provides information on all of these special commanders, the uh, unique and seasoned commanders. This tab isn't used for any automation and it doesn't interact with the first two tabs. It's purely an informational resource. The tab includes compiled information for each of the seasoned and unique commanders, including on how to obtain them. In the notes column, I've put some important information or at least information I think is important uh, and provided some recommendations about the ships that they could be assigned to and why I feel that way. 
Now, I'm a DD main. You might have different opinions. That's okay. If so, you should feel free to update these notes with your own thoughts about each commander. As you make these assignments, you might come back in a couple years and be like, why did I assign this guy here? And if you've left yourself a note, you'll be glad you did. The fourth and fifth tabs basically provide some data references that are used by the captain, cohort, and special commanders tabs. Under normal circumstances, you should not need to mess with these tabs. I guess maybe if we're getting added a new nation, you'd want to update it in there, and that's possible, but I'll probably just create a new version of the spreadsheet, so you shouldn't have to do any of that either. If you decide you want to monkey with these tabs, you absolutely can in your own copy. That's going to be just fine. However, you are doing so at your own risk. If you want to ask me about them and how they work and stuff, you can certainly join the Discord and post in the Captain Spreadsheet channel, and I will answer your questions as best I can. Now let's talk about how we use cohorts. First, let's go back to the Captain's tab, and we'll add a commander and assign them some cohorts. Let's say we have the French unique commander, Philippe Aboineau. First, we'll add his name into the cell labeled Captain. Then we'll select his commander type, Unique, which automatically highlights the captain cell in gold. Pretty cool. If he were a seasoned commander, the cell would be highlighted in green, and normal and multi-nation commanders don't have any sort of cell highlighting. If we aren't familiar with Philippe's capabilities, we can go to the Special Commanders tab and read about his skills. Philippe's Fire and Fury and his Surge Forward talents pair nicely with his Enhanced Survivability Expert skill for the fast gunboat destroyers of the French tech tree. Because of this, we'll assign him to the Clibert. To do so, we'll type Clibert in the tech tree ship column. Next, we'll add his level. Let's say that our Philippe has 17 points. I'll put 17 into the label column, and note that this automatically updates the value in the XP needed column to how much XP it takes to get to the 18th level. So now we'll add his current XP to the XP column. Let's say he has 75,400 experience points. Note that this automatically calculates the value in the percentage column. This means that Philippe is 29.11% of the way towards being level 18. Note that the needed and XP columns are shaded in light green. This indicates that those cells have automatically calculated formulas in them and you should not type in there. The same is true of the cohort ships column. Finally, let's assign some cohorts to Philippe. To do this, we'll just use the dropdowns in the cohort columns and select the names of the cohorts that we'd like to assign to them. The cohort names in the dropdowns are automatically created from the information that is entered into the cohort tab. As you select cohorts, you can see that the list of ships in the cohort ships column automatically populate with the names and tiers of the ships that are in the cohorts that you selected. Those ship lists are also from the data entry in the cohorts tab. To deselect a cohort from your captain, simply select the dash or hyphen cohort, which will clear that selection. It'll also remove the ships from that cohort from the cohort ships column uh, for that commander. Because each commander can have a build for each class of ship in World of Warships, we can assign up to five cohorts to Aboinu. One for destroyers, one for cruisers, battleships, carriers, and finally one for submarines, since there are no French submarines in the game. <laughs> we won't be able to assign him a submarine cohort. When it comes to customizing the cohorts, I did a lot of my own thinking and I consulted several online resources provided by the World of Warships community and I talked to a bunch of players that I trust while I was doing my cohort development. I think that for a lot of players, these cohorts will work, but you'll certainly want to make some changes. And if you want to change them, feel free. You should change them if it's better for you. You can insert rows, delete rows, rewrite my cohorts, or define brand new ones of your own. And you can also add as many rows as you'd like at the bottom of the spreadsheet, and they should still continue to add nicely and update automatically throughout all of the tabs. Have fun coming up with your own cohorts. And I mean that. I'm not just telling you that it's it's like a crazy task and like have fun, jerks. Like I, I genuinely mean have fun because it's kind of cool. Oh, and one more thing. The current cohorts include all of the ships in the game as of right now, I think. I mean, I guess like Kitakami's not in there, but like nobody has. You might not have all of those ships. So when you choose your cohorts, ships that you do not own will appear in your commander's cohort ship lists. At first, this might seem a little bit annoying. Having those extra ships in there is 
odd because you don't have them. However, I urge you to leave them there and I'll tell you why. The reason is, is that the more ships that are in a cohort, the better defined that cohort is. It helps us to understand what the cohort is about and what kind of ships go in that group. So I do recommend leaving them. Plus, then if you ever get those ships later, they'll already be there, properly allocated, and you'll already know what commander is supposed to run them. You won't even have to think about it unless you really want to. That said, if it really bothers you, you can certainly go and delete them, and then as you acquire new ships, you can allocate them one by one by yourself. You'll, you'll take the ship, you'll go to your cohorts tab, figure out where it goes, drop it into that list, and then it'll ripple through and update automatically throughout the spreadsheet. Basically, that's kind of how the original version of the spreadsheet worked. You had to define your own cohorts in your head and maintain them as you obtained new ships. The new spreadsheet just kind of has pre-allocated them all. And I, like I said, I, at first I didn't like this either, but I think it's actually the right way to do it. So your mileage may vary. Take your best shot at doing it however you prefer. But for me, I'm leaving all the ships in there, even if I don't have them, because I think that's actually the way to do it. So for the last section of the video, what I want to do is answer a bunch of questions. Some of these I got from a couple of people who tested the spreadsheet with me, and then some of them I just anticipate will be questions that people will ask. So here we go. Uh, the first question is, I use the old spreadsheet. How can I port my data into the new version? Um, you can do this, of course, uh, but the process is a little bit manual, I'm afraid. So uh, the first thing you'll want to do is filter the old and the new spreadsheets by country so that you're just looking at one nation's worth of captains. Then you'll want to copy over the data in columns. Uh, I think there's only three columns you need to copy over, captain, points, and XP, and paste them in the associated cap, uh, columns in the new spreadsheet. When you paste that data in, make sure that you right click and select paste special and choose values only. This will prevent you from blowing away any of the um, conditional formatting that exists in the new spreadsheet. I found this to be the most reliable way to bring the data over. One issue, of course, is that you'll have to type in your man, uh, your tech tree assignments manually. Um, and this is because in the old spreadsheet, you would put multiple ships in there. And in the new spreadsheet, you wouldn't. I guess you could still copy those over. And then as you assign your cohorts, um, update each row individually. I'll leave that up to you. But that's basically how you'll import your data from the old spreadsheet. Hey Clyde, you mentioned some hidden columns. What are they and why would I use them? By default, there are five hidden columns in the new spreadsheet. Um, and they are there because they could provide some value to some players, but not to everyone. And also, if you unhide all of the columns, it might make the spreadsheet pretty wide for people who don't have like an ultra wide monitor. Um, the voice column allows you to select whether or not the captain has a custom voice pack. The visual column lets you select whether or not the captain has custom art. There's a class and a tier column, which allows you to mark the class and the tier of the uh, tech tree ship that the commander is assigned to. There is a target column, which lets you specify the target ship that the captain is destined to be on. So say you're grinding, like right now I'm grinding the um, British battle cruiser line, I'm on the Hawk. So my commander that's assigned to the Hawk will eventually be assigned to the St. Vincent. So in my ship assigned ship column, I would say Hawk. And in my target column, I would say St. Vincent. Right now I would say class, uh, battleship and tier, uh, tier eight for Hawk, that kind of a thing. Uh, the next question is, I just got a new premium ship and it's not already in the spreadsheet, so what should I do? Um, if the ship works with one of your existing cohorts, you can just go to that existing cohort and add it to the list. To do this, you'll double click into the cohort ship list box and then hit control enter and that'll put a new line in there. You can type in the ship's name and then in parentheses, you can put the tier of the ship. Um, if the ship requires a new cohort, it doesn't work with one of your existing ones, then you can insert a new row on the cohorts tab and uh, create a new cohort for that ship. Why did you use Google Sheets for this project instead of Excel or OpenOffice or LibreOffice or something? Um, I used Google Sheets for this project because it is free and everyone can use it. Uh, Google Sheets is also hosted in the cloud and so you can access it easily anywhere and on any device. And if you're in offline mode, you don't even need to have the internet. Although technically this is a tool for an online game, so you'd probably only be enter uh, you know, entering new data if you're online and connected to the game client. The next question is, I don't like Google Sheets. I'm going to download this and open it with Excel. Are there any problems with that? 
Uh, yes, there are some problems with that. If you download this and open it up with Excel, some of the formulas won't translate correctly and it won't really work, particularly around the area of cohorts. Uh, one of my testers discovered this issue and it basically means that you won't be able to customize your cohorts and you're stuck with the ones that I provided to you. For me, that's a deal breaker. So don't try to use this in Excel. It does not work. The translation from Google Sheets is just not functional. Um, Maybe take this as an opportunity to learn a new tool and get comfortable with Google Sheets because it's pretty awesome and it can do a lot. Uh, I may take some time and try to figure out how to make this work with with Excel. And if it if I can, I'll, I'll upload the Excel spreadsheet to my Discord at some point. But right now, that is not a promised feature and I am not actively working on it. I have a multi-nation commander. How do I handle this? To be fair, the spreadsheet does not handle this case particularly well, but there's basically two things that you can do. The first is to put the commander in twice, once under each nation. You'll probably want to maintain the XP in only one of those entries, so whichever country you think of as that commander's primary country is where I would do that. This way, you can assign cohorts from both countries to the nation's respective commander entry. One weakness of this strategy is that you will have an unset cohort on one country that's set in another one and so it can be hard to uh, know whether or not that's done. To work around that you'll just want to filter your spreadsheet based on multi-nation in the commander type column or, or yeah column and then that'll work pretty nicely. The second option is to put uh, the commander only in once under whatever nation you think of as its primary, but to build some weird kind of specialized cohorts that include ships from both countries and make sure you don't try to assign those to commanders that are not multinational. Essentially, you would put some ships in the wrong nation on purpose and then they would be as, uh, assigned to one of the multinational um, uh, captains in that way. Luckily, this is not a large problem for any player and it's not a problem at all for some players. So hopefully you can figure out one of these workarounds or something of your own creation and be perfectly happy with your multinational commanders and how they're handled in the spreadsheet. The next question is, I really like the special commanders tab, but I don't care about your stupid cohorts, Clyde. Can't I just use this like the old spreadsheet? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, simply hide the cohort ships column and all of the cohort columns out on the far right and just pretend that they don't exist. And basically at that point, you've got yourself an updated version of the original spreadsheet. That won't bother me at all. I mean, it's not like I worked really hard on this cohort thing all summer, you ungrateful piece of shit. And the last question is, why can't I assign two cohorts of the same class to the same commander? You can't do that because that's a really dumb idea. If you have two cohorts of the same nation and the same class, but you want to assign them to the same commander, what you actually have is one cohort that you gave two names for an arbitrary and not real reason. Since a commander can only have one build for each class, assigning them two cohorts of the same class requires them to run the same build. If the build is the same, then it's one cohort. If the build is different, then you have to assign them to two different captains. Hey, thank you so much for watching. You made it all the way to the end of what I'm sure is going to be an incredibly long video by the time I'm finished editing it. If you made it this far, please go down to the comment section and say, don't show your broadside. Um, I hope that you will take a chance to grab the new spreadsheet and give it a try and hopefully it'll help you be more efficient with your captain arrangements and things like that. If it's too nerdy for you, I get it. But if it's too nerdy for you, I don't know how you watch this video for this long. So if you made it here, you must be a turbo nerd. <laughs> anyway, if you have made it this far as well and you haven't hit the subscribe button, uh, you might as well hit it now because obviously you're into this kind of content and we would love to have you come back and check out our next video. I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about the new captain spreadsheet. So please go down into the comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll try to answer as many questions and respond to as many comments as I can. Thank you so much for watching. We will catch you in the next battle, captains. Please take care of each other. Be nice and we will see you out there. Bye. It also provides better tracking of commanders that have unis. Unis? What's a un... A cohort is a greep... A greep? <laughs> I mean, I have said some dumb things, but that's super dumb. A greep.